Hello folks, my name is Rick Pearson and this is Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. Today we continue with our final session from Bradenton, Florida, so stay tuned, we'll be right back. Welcome back, folks. Before we begin our program today, I'd like to invite you to join Karen and myself every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our Bible study podcast with live chat. You can go to prophecyusa.org, our YouTube channel, or just send us your email and we can send you a link every week to remind you. So today, we're concluding our prophecy seminar at Flame the Fire Conference in Bradenton, Florida. And my host, Pastor Phil Durstein, told me that he has never seen the dots of prophetic scripture joined together so well as we did in this two-hour live presentation. Today, we're going to show you that dramatic conclusion of what we see coming on that final day when Jesus Christ comes to take his bride. It's dramatic, it's sobering, but most importantly, it's theologically rock solid as we go line upon line and precept upon precept in our search for America's role in Bible prophecy. So I'd like to once again welcome you to Bradenton's Christian Retreats Family Church for the dramatic conclusion of our research concerning this covenant nation that we love so much called the United States of America. And you are there. Babylon persecutes those who raise up a shout. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of saints. And I was wroth with my people, says Isaiah. And I gave them into thine hand, and you showed them no mercy. Upon the ancient hast thou heavily laid thy yoke. Jeremiah was told before I formed you in the womb, or in the belly, I knew you, Jeremiah. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. Jeremiah says, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me a destroying wind. And I will send Babylon fanners that shall fan her. And I will bring forth the wind out of my treasures. We are supposed to stand up against this and raise up a shout and warn them because what's coming is horrendous. And God says, you are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with thee I will break in pieces the nations. For surely I will fill Babylon with men as with caterpillars. And they shall lift up a shout against Babylon. Out of 65 million children sacrificed in Babylon, how many prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, and prophets' blood has entered into the cup that was sacrificed out of the 65 million children? Only God knows only God knows it says come out of her my people partake not in her sins that you receive not of her plagues this is the exact reason the angel cries out and John records it in scripture Babylon has verbal warnings Ezekiel 33 says if I show you that calamity is coming and you don't warn them and they die in their sin their blood is on your head there is a concentrated effort right now taking place in America to stop the atrocity of abortion. It's God's way of warning people of what is coming. There will be no excuses to those who rebel against God's laws. But woe unto them who know in advance what is coming, but refuse to raise up a shout. Babylon has prophets within her because it says, I would, and in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints. Jeremiah said... In the latter days, you shall understand it clearly. That's today. I've not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I've not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they'd stood in my counsel, caused my people to hear my words, 
they would have turned them from their evil ways. Those who say America is a covenant nation, be very, very careful. Before you prophesy a word of faith, you better read the word of faith. Don't prophesy something that you cannot back with Scripture. In 605 Hananiah, the prophet confronted Jeremiah as a gloom and doom prophet and said, God's not going to judge the covenant nation of Judah. He died several months later because the Lord rebuked him. And it says, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord hath not sent thee, but thou madest the people trust in a lie. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth this year, and you will die. So Hananiah the prophet died that same year. America is a covenant nation. 400, Bible, in biblical numerology, is a divine period of time that is a multiplication of two numbers. 8 times 50. The Bible Dictionary of Bible Themes says 50 is a year of jubilation. It's a move of God's spirit and it's a liberation from a burden. 50 is mentioned over 100 times in Scripture. 8 is a number of new beginnings. Just as 8 survivors left, Noah's, uh, left the ark in Noah's family. So 400 is a multiplicity of both jubilee and new beginnings. And that is why numerology says it's a divine period of time. Moses, in Moses' day, after 400 years of slavery, the children of Israel experienced a move of God's spirit, liberation of a burden, and a new beginning. However, it also meant a time of judgment for the pagan Egyptians. It was 400 years of disobedience. And it was plagues by God's spirit, punishment for persecuting God's people, and a major military loss in the Red Sea after 400 years. It was a two-edged sword from God. So what does this have to do with the miraculous election of the 46th president? Let's look what's happened in just one year of America's 400th covenant with God. 400 years of covenant. Remember, for every 15 verses of blessing in Deuteronomy 28, God gives us 53 verses of warning if we break that covenant. The United Nations has a 2030 agenda. The World Economic Forum has a great reset. The COVID-19 pandemic has an accelerated mandate. But as the new world order plans their world without God, nothing will be accelerated faster than the prophetic word God has spoken to the United States of America. It will be the hour that changes everything. Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest book, The Hour That Changes Everything. Together with our study guide and free app, prepare yourself for one of the greatest events in Bible prophecy. Go to prophecyusa.org or call the number on your screen now to make your donation of $35 or more and receive your copy of the book, the hour that changes everything. We are waiting to hear from you. Call today. On January 1st, 2021, construction of the southern border walls of America ceased, allowing unvaccinated COVID-19 carriers, drug smugglers, human traffickers, and two million illegal aliens come. Jeremiah prophesies, the walls of Babylon shall be utterly broken. In Deuteronomy 28, from Moses' covenant of blessings and curses, if you don't obey my voice, therefore thou shalt serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. Thy high and fenced walls shall come down, and he shall besiege thee in thy gates throughout all thy land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. On March 18th, 2021, the Keystone Pipeline stopped. 50,000 people were laid off discontinuing self-sufficiency, making America dependent on foreign oil. Deuteronomy 28.17 says, If you do not obey God's voice, cursed shall be the fruit of thy land. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, but be only oppressed, and the stranger shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. The U.S. debt has soared to $29 trillion. When you obey God's voice, the stranger shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. And the borrower is servant to the lender. When you read the Bible, the Bible reads you. When you examine it, it examines you. Our job is not to judge others. Our job is to read this 
and let this book judge us. Our job is to love everyone. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict of sin, and it's God's job to judge. However, if you voice your opinion based on biblical protocol, you will have persecution from those who don't believe in biblical protocol. But woe to them that judge God's people, for according to Scripture, they've laid a heavy yoke upon themselves. In addition to the flag mandate, LGBT initiatives have now been mandated within the U.S. military to teach gender equality to its military. Exactly 20 years since the 9-11 Towers warning, the greatest military in the history of the world ran from a small Taliban army in Afghanistan, leaving men, women, children, and $85 billion worth of military equipment. So what did the prophets say? Jeremiah prophesied this. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he have executed and accomplished the intents of his heart. In the latter days, you will consider it clearly. Jeremiah 51 says, I will make Babylon drunk, her princes, her wise men, her rulers, her mighty men. They shall sleep a perpetual sleep. Jeremiah 51, 30 says, the mighty men of Babylon have forborne to fight. They have, their might hath failed. They have become as women. This is where we are on the prophetic time clock. Now there's good news coming, just hold out. <laughs> God warns his people, he says, come out of her, my people, be not partaker of her sins. Jesus said, let him who has ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. He talks about the seven churches. Uh, one church has a Nicolaitan spirit, that Nico is leadership, Laos is laity. Nicholas was a deacon in the church of Pergamos, he was a pagan. He got into Judaism, then he became a Christian, and then he started introducing all these pagan sexual rituals into the, into the temple. And Jesus said, I hate the Nicolaitans. Woe unto you that are teachers of the word that bring my people into wrong teaching. Many church leaders are embracing all the Babylonian religions. We're supposed to go into all the world and preach the gospel, not, not, not let all the world come into us and defy our gospel. This is what's happening. Okay? The richest church in the history of the world is Laodicea. She appears right before the rapture takes place. She says in her heart, I'm rich and I have need of nothing. Jesus said, I counsel you, buy from me gold refined in the fire that thou may be rich towards God. Jesus warns this church how they steward their finances is very important. The average believer in America has more than King Solomon did, the richest man in the world, supposedly. But he didn't live in climate control environment. He didn't have a flush toilet, electricity. He didn't travel in automobiles, airplanes, or trucks. He didn't communicate with cell phones, text, email, internet. He wasn't entertained by TV, radio, YouTube, or Facebook. And he wasn't medically, medically treated with Novocaine, x-rays, or modern medicine. The average person in America is, is some of the richest people in the history of the world. And yet many people want more. 4,000 years ago, an antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it. Gideon overturned it. Elijah overwhelmed it. And Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of asterisk poles with rampant immorality and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. I had a man come against me and talk about cheerful giving. You need to be a cheerful giver. You don't have to tithe. You don't have to tithe. But us tithers pay for 85% of the church's overhead, and the cheerful freeloaders come in, and they get the free music, free chairs, and, and us tithers are paying the bill. Now, I'm not complaining about tithing because God has blessed me way beyond my wildest dreams because of tithing. I have been successful not because of my IQ. I've been successful because of my obedience. 
the church of Philadelphia. God has promised us that there will be a church of Philadelphia. And it says, I know your works and I've set before you an open door that no man can shut. Because you've kept my word about my patience, I will keep you from the hour of trial or tribulation that is coming upon the whole earth to try those who dwell upon the earth. There's something about that hour that's going to change everything. But the appointed time of that hour will come when God says enough is enough. And the woman is deposed and the new world order comes in. Babylon's cup will be filled to the appointed time of her judgment. In Revelation 18, 8, it says her plagues will come in one day and she shall be utterly burned with fire. Revelation 18, 10 says, For in one hour is thy judgment come, O Babylon. And Revelation 18, 17, For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. In one hour, Revelation 18, 19 says, She's made desolate. Revelation 14, 7 says, The hour of her judgment has come. John gives us five references of one hour this woman is going to be taken down. Isaiah prophesies 750 years before Christ, these things shall come to thee, Babylon, in a moment, in one day, the loss of children and widowhood. Revelation 17, 16 says, the ten horns will hate the woman, they will make her desolate and burn her with fire, for God... God has put into their heart to carry out his purpose by being of one mind and handing over the royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. The first thing that the Antichrist is going to do, he's going to burn the woman off his back so he can have global power. Who will take part in deposing the woman? Everybody knows about the Gog Magog war. Now, the results of this war, I will leave but the sixth part of the 85% of the people coming against Israel are going to be burned with fire. And thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, and thy bands, thy people that is with thee. For I have spoken it, saith the Lord, and I will send fire on Gog and Magog, and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles. And they shall know that I am the Lord. And they will burn the weapons for seven years. How long does the tribulation period last? seven years this war will kick off the tribulation jeremiah 51 27 says prepare against her against babylon the kingdom of ararat mini and askenes prepare against her the nations of the kings of the medes and the land shall tremble and sorrow to make the land of babylon a desolation when you check with ethnologists ararat is turkey Eskenaz is Russia, and the spirit of the Medes is Iran. In 2017, Russia, Iran, and Turkey made an alliance. Oddly enough, now listen to this, oddly enough, the same country, Iran, who chants death to America while President Barack Obama secretly flies your money, $150 billion worth of cash in the middle of the night, is the same country prophesied to destroy Babylon the Great. Oddly enough, the same country who the Biden administration just allowed to have a pipeline into Europe while canceling the Keystone Pipeline is now in coalition with Turkey. Turkey and Russia have more nuclear weapons than USA, and Iran is spinning uranium even as John Kerry begs them to reconsider. This is happening right now. Bible prophecy is taking place right now under our noses. And I'm going to ask you something. Where are the prophets? Where are the prophetic voices warning us? So how far are we from this happening? Nobody knows. But only the Father at an appointed time, Jesus will be called to open the first four seals to begin the tribulation period. God is in control of the whole world, including America and Canada. We are in Bible prophecy, folks. We're in the Bible. So the next time somebody says to you that America has a covenant with God, I want you to say to them, where are we in Scripture? 
and hold their feet to the fire and see what they say. Does it make sense that the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world and Russia's in the Bible, Iran's in the Bible, Turkey's in the Bible, Saudi Arabia's in the Bible, but you just can't find America. No, we're just nowhere to be found. That is, that's hidden. That's hidden in the Bible. I don't mean to get upset, but I've been at this 35 years. <laughs> I'm, I'm really used to rejection. Ezekiel said, I live, I live, said the Lord. I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways. Why will ye die? For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by Lord Jesus Christ. And God has a plan for us who are willing to follow the word instead of the herd. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I Know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Then she, you will call upon me and you shall go and pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. But in Revelations 19, 7 and 9, after the destruction of Babylon, it says, Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife hath made herself ready. And she shall be arrayed in fine linen, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. After, after Babylon is destroyed. In 750 BC, an angel was released and visited Isaiah. Now listen to this very carefully. It touched his lips with the coals from off the altar, and he prophesied every verse I quoted tonight concerning Babylon the Great. In 630 BC, an angel was released and visited Jeremiah, 100 years later. He had his mouth touched by an angel, and he prophesied every word that I quoted to you tonight. Remember, I'm not saying, thus saith the Lord. I'm quoting these prophets. I'm quoting Moses, the Mosaic Laws. In 550 BC, an angel was released and visited Ezekiel. He was given a book to eat and he prophesied the latter day war of Gog, Magog, and the fiery judgment that would come upon those who dwell carelessly in the isles, Babylon. Those three men prophesied this. In 1986, I had an audible voice wake me up in the middle of the night with something hovering directly over my bed and asked me this question audibly. Rick, do you have the rhinestones in your mouth and the jewels in your hands? And I said, no. And something reached down my mouth and touched me four times in my throat and once in the palm of each of my hands. And I said, why are you calling me, Gord? And the voice said, because I love you. And then the voice entered my chest and said, I want you to have fruit that remaineth. Then the word of the Lord came to me that had been speaking to me all week. And this is what... This is what I heard in my spirit. There's going to be an exodus, a catching away of the church. It will come in the twinkling of an eye and in the midst of mass global confusion. The same spirits that rose during the time of Babylon are rising again. And just as King Nebuchadnezzar was manipulated to cast Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego into a burning fiery furnace, certain individuals are going to push some buttons and cast certain sections of this planet into a burning fiery furnace. After the dust settles and the smoke clears from the sea of humanity will rise a one world government. A global census will be taken and a mark will be issued on the right hand and on the forehead. Tell everyone that you give this message to if they kill your children or your family before your very eyes and you're here during that time, do not take any mark on your right hand or on your forehead. Now folks, I've showed you in scripture when the rain fell down on Noah, Noah's family went up. When the fire came in on Lot, Lot's family came out. And when the fiery judgment comes down on Babylon, the bride will go up. And just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in 600 BC, the same God who delivered them will deliver us. Not one hair of your head will be singed, neither will the flames have any power over your body. For I tell you a mystery. We shall be changed. 
in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trump shall sound the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality we may not understand all the hithers and thithers in Bible theology we may not understand what it means that an angel placed the rhinestones in my mouth and the jewels in my hands because I don't even understand all this but I've come to America to tell you what the last prophet of the Old Testament promised the chosen generation that God is in total control of what is happening in this nation and to those who have ears to hear the prophet Malachi promises us and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name and you shall be mine says the Lord of hosts in that day when I make up my jewels and I will spare you as a man spares his own son that serves him for behold the day cometh that shall burn as an oven but unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness rise with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall every generation has thought they were the chosen generation but no generation has ever heard it said like this so get ready get set get your house in order our redemption draweth nigh he's coming he's coming folks I trust your hearts were stirred as we concluded our live seminar presentation many times in the world of Bible prophecy messengers had to deliver a word that many did not want to hear and that is why we want to remind you that Jesus Christ said this let not your heart be troubled ye believe in God believe also in me for in my father's house are many mansions if it were not so I would have told you but I go to prepare a place for you and if I go to prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also this is prophecy USA my name is Rick Pearson reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and folks he's coming back much sooner than many people think we'll see you next week on prophecy USA Shalom <laughs>